Hello kids, welcome to our class. Today we're gonna see a new story. This is the story of Obi Okapi. You can use your pace of word building or animal science. Page 9. Obi Okapi lived with his family far from the other animals, in a remote part of the jungle. Okapis are a lot like giraffes. Okapis are tall and have creamy white stripes on their legs. Although Okapi are not exactly unfriendly, they do choose homes away from the other animals. Page 10. One day, all the young Okapis were together in a clearing in the jungle. They found a strange home. No creature they had ever known made such a home. There was a brown hut of some kind with lots of shiny tin things hanging about the area. What kind of visitor had come to the jungle? There was not a movement around the strange home they had found. Page 11. Suddenly, though the forest, they could hear footsteps. The strange new visitor was coming back to its home. The little animals scattered quickly. In a few moments, you could not see a sight for a creature. They had all disappeared, but there were little eyes peering out from behind the bushes, watching to see what the new creature looked like. Hobiokapi was one of the watching animals, and what a surprise sight he saw! A creature that walked on two legs came into view, followed by its mate also walking on its two legs, and a little one walked between them. If you had seen them, you would have called them a man, a woman, and a child. But Obio Capi did not know that was what they were. After all, Obio Capi had been back in his own corner of the jungle most of his life. Here, son, the mom called to the little boy. Let's make a telephone. A telephone out here? Dad, I didn't know you could make a telephone, said the boy. Oh, I can do a lot of things that might surprise you. Get mother to let you have two empty cans. Here are two I rinsed and cleaned just this morning, the mother said, and they have no sharp, jagged edges. Page 12. That's exactly what we need. Now, son, watch. I will make a hole right in the center of the bottom of each can. That's how you make a telephone? asked the boy. Just wait, you will see. Now, I will take this string and put it through the hole. He threaded it through the hole in the bottom of the can. He then tied a knot in the end of the string so that it could not slip back through the hole. Now, I will put the other end of the string through the hole in the bottom of the other can. Here, let me do it. I can do it, the boy eagerly said. And he could. He threaded the end through the hole tied a knot in the string and pulled it through until it stopped, just as his father had done. Now, son, our telephone is ready to be used. That's a telephone? Dad, you're teasing me. No, I'm not. Here, you take this can and run over the edge of the clearing until the string is stretched tightly. Then, put the can to your ear and listen. Page 13. The boy did as his father said. He put the can to his ear just as if it were a telephone. Holding the string tight, the father placed his can to his mouth. Hello, son. The boy let out a hoop. I can hear you. I can hear you, he yelled. Dad, you did make a telephone. Don't yell, son. Use a telephone. Talk into your can. Now and I will listen with my can. It worked. He did not have to yell or even talk very loudly. Somehow the tight string carried the sound of his voice and his father could hear him. Even through their were far apart. This is really fun, Dad, he said into the can. It's a neat telephone. I have really got a smart dad. Obio Capi picked out from behind a big plant. What fun the two new creatures were having! Obiokapi decided he wanted to play the same game. 
Why only yesterday Obiokapi had seen empty cans and a long piece of string, which some careless hunters had left at their campsite when they moved on. Obiokapi hurried back to the campsite, and sure enough, Obiokapi found just what he needed. Page 14. The next day, Obiokapi joined the other young animals at the water hole. Look what I have, he said. Oh, I have seen tin cans before, yawned the lion cub. Lots of hunters leave them around their campsites. Sometimes you can get a lick of pretty good food out of them. Have you ever tele telephoned before? Obiokapi asked. Telephone? What's that? said the young lion. I don't know. It's some way you play with the cans and string. It looked as if the creatures using it were having a lot of fun. All the animals looked at Obiokapi. Don't you know what those creatures were? No, said Obiokapi. We don't have any like that where I live. That was a man, Obiokapi. You have to be careful of creatures like that. Well, they look happy. That's all I can say. Obiokapi wanted so badly to make friends with the other animals, but he was so shy. Obiokapi knew if he were to have friends, he was going to have to be friendly. Let's play, Obiokapi said. Who wants to be my friend and try to talk on the telephone? How scared Obiokapi was that no one would play with him. He smiled just a little bit of a smile. Please, he said. I will play with you, Obiokapi, said a little tiger. I will too, said the frog and the little monkey. Soon all the animals were playing with the Obiokapi. He had lots of friends because he decided to be friendly. Now, I'm not going to tell you that the animals learned to talk on Obiokapi's telephone because they never really did that. But what fun they had with the two cans and the string. They threw the cans and got tangled up in the stream and had a great time. One thing was true. Obio Capi always had many friends after that because he tried to be friendly. So kids, if we want friends, we need to show ourselves friendly. Now, on your page of animal science on page 16, with a red crayon, follow the correct line from the Okapi to the monkey. Thanks for watching. See you until next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.